the title of our talk, Can Teaching Junior Docs Self-Teach Improve Their Confidence and the Likelihood of Them Teaching in the Future? So that's the title. And so back, a bit of background there. Back in August 2017, when we were given essentially a blank, blank canvas to design a half-day teaching course for the junior doctors. And Sharon and I both reflected on some of the good aspects of teaching, and we wanted to implement some of those. So we wanted to make it student-centered, interactive, and practical. We also had a look at the GMC outcomes for graduates, and it does talk about junior doctors should be able to teach and should be able to give effective feedback. So with that in mind, we designed a flyer, as you can see there, uh, a top tips for teaching. <laughs> we ran the course uh, on Saturday, Saturday afternoon, twice from 12 to 3, and Lisa Evans helped us to distribute this uh, flyer to the junior doctors. And like any course, you need a, 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 we want a, a, an in effective, sorry, effective um, icebreaker, so we started off with this one, and we got the junior doctors to introduce themselves, but what we wanted to do was actually tell each other an interesting fact about them. Now, that fact could be a truth or a lie. <laughs> so, I'll give you an example here. So, I'm Steve Delay. My interesting fact is that I've done a, a lot of wrestling in the past. Now, is that a truth or a lie? It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm Trudy Kinn and I know how to fly a plane. This is true. Um, so after we've done some of the icebreakers and tried to get some of the candidates kind of interacting with us a bit, we then went into a bit of a lecture style session where we encouraged discussion throughout that and went through some kind of educational theories and some essentially top tips for how they could improve their teaching skills. So one of the things we talked about was room layout and what works best for different room settings, numbers of students, and sort of different styles of teaching. And then I talked about small group teaching, so a lot of the teaching around the hospital, particularly in wards and clinics, a small group. And I talked a little bit about the theory of the, the group development theory, um, using Tuckman and Jensen there. I also talked about arranging the room and how we can arrange the room differently depending on the, the, the outcome that we want. So goldfish uh, bowl method there, that's quite useful where you have a centralised uh, uh, group in the centre and surrounding that group you have a, another group that the observers. So you task the, the central group with maybe a discussion or demonstration and then the group outside gives them feedback and that can be reversed. Snowballing essentially is you have the room set out with small groups, you give the group a task, then the tables are joined gradually, gradually, making the group larger and larger in consolidating ideas. Crossover is just fertilization, cross fertilization of ideas. Now, one of the things that we're getting more and more keen on is introducing interactivity in our teaching sessions, and we all know that can be quite a difficult task at times. Um, anyone guess what this is? Oh. Yeah, so this, this was one of the best teaching sessions I ever actually attended, which was run by one of our nursing staff, who brought in a load of Play-Doh and sweets and said, make us some anatomically correct hearts. And then, so we all made hearts and she went around and poked holes in them, and said what would happen where these holes are, so that we were kind of teaching each other. It was a really, really good session. So we went through some ways that students could design activities like that to include in their sessions. Um, during this, um, this part, we actually gave them some Play-Doh, and asked them to model uh, the person next to them, and uh, these were kind of some of the results we got, just to give an idea um, of the kind of activities that you can actually use in sessions. So, um, throughout these sessions we were aiming to demonstrate some kind of good examples of body language, you can decide what they are. <laughs> um, but we wanted to use lots of kind of different modalities, so we used this video, which if any of you are interested in is very good, um, which talks about using different body languages, but we actually got the candidates to critique it and critique the body language that they'd seen on that video to kind of generate some discussion, which worked really well. Um, after that, we also went on to kind of giving feedback. Now, we've had a lot of discussion today about different kinds of debriefs and kind of what things work in workshops and that kind of thing. Um, and I think we all know there are a lot of feedback tools that we use throughout the NHS and none of them are perfect for every setting, but we wanted to give the candidates some idea of different tools that they could possibly use um, in the clinical setting to give group feedback. 
So we went through some of those. Um, and then we went on to talk about some kind of more general rules of feedback. So we got the, the candidates to give us examples of good and bad feedback that they'd have to come up with kind of feedback do's and don'ts. Um, and then we wanted them to use these in a session later on, so we gave them handouts regarding this as well. We also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, students in difficulty, so we, we wanted to, uh, the, the junior doctors, recognise when students are struggling. And um, one of the things we did stress, we wanted, didn't want the junior doctors to take on the burden of the students' uh, problems, and we talked more in terms of where signposting is. And of course, there's lots of signposting, student services, counselling, uh, staff, and of course, approaching us. What we didn't want them to feel that they were on their own with that student and the problems. We also talked to, a little bit about technology now. I talked about enhancing PowerPoints, and we use PowerPoint all the time, of course. But there's some other tools within PowerPoint that you may not be aware of. One of the things you can do in PowerPoint, of course, you can, you can modify your images to express whatever you want using shapes. Now, these are under cropping. Cropping is usually cropping images square, but you can actually use lots of different shapes that can crop your image. By the way, that's not me wrestling there. <laughs> And uh, one of the practical aspects is, this is from the internet, because I, I, I want some sort of tool to cut around it, and that's very easy in PowerPoint, you can just use this circular tool. The other things uh, uh, that I talked about are the videos themselves, and you don't necessarily have to have the square uh, format, the videos can take any format that you want, and that's all built into PowerPoint, and I'll turn this off in a moment. So this looks like it mobile phone and there's a gentleman thinking about his holidays I suppose. And so of course you can you can use um, different uh, formatting for the videos. I also talked about this tool which is in PowerPoint, rollover text, where you, you can have an image or some text and it, it's it, and, and it brings up what, what, what the labeling is immediately. So it's just a rollover, uh, let's just move it around a little bit, you can see it changing. Here's a definition, of course, and the text is rather small, but that's quite easy to do in PowerPoint as well. Um, and the other thing we kind of talked about in technology was um, ways to introduce quizzes and things like that in, in their teaching. And one of the ways we've been using a lot recently is Mentimeter. I know we've seen some examples of kind of the, the word that format here that, that can, can be generated from Mentimeter. Um, but there's actually a free trial of this, so actually, even if you've not got an account, you can generate some questions and use it in some teaching sessions. So we were kind of encouraging candidates to go and find these bits of software and explain how to use them and show them how they could introduce them into their teaching. Um, after the kind of lecture start topic and a bit of a coffee break, um, we then went on to some micro-teaching sessions in the afternoon. So prior to the course, we'd asked all the candidates to come up with a five-minute micro-teach on any topic, we said, kind of non-medical if we could try and get there, because we have kind of a range of F1s through to kind of CT2s coming to the course. Um, so we, we didn't want it to be solely based on medical knowledge, and we wanted to mainly focus on the actual teaching aspects um, that, that they were using. Um, so what we did is we got them all into smaller groups, and they got them to deliver those micro-teaching sessions. As you can see, we had a whole range of topics, everything from weightlifting to arts and crafts, cookery, and um, some very weird and wonderful equipment turned up on the, on the unit um, to do some of these sessions. Um, and then we got those students in those sessions to feed back to the people who were delivering the sessions using the feedback tools that we discussed earlier. So we got them to apply the knowledge that we have given them earlier in the day. So the evaluation aspect of it, pre and post questionnaire, like it, scale 1 to 5. The questionnaire was uh, on, an online questionnaire prior to the, the course, and then we did one of the course post course. Didn't ask them too many questions. So what are, how well prepared were they prior to the, to the course and, and post? Of course, uh, students on the ward, teaching medical students on the ward, pre course is this. And what we were trying to do is this is uh, not particularly well prepared to very well prepared. So we wanted to increase these bits and reduce these as we have done in this particular case. How well do you describe your ability to deliver a seminar? Again, there's an increase to the, the very good and the good and decreased poor, poor prepared. 
dealing with students with difficulty. Again, you know, there's a lot of anxiety pre course. You can see that I, I'm not particularly uh, happy with uh, dealing with students and here, I'm averagely prepared and so on. And uh, again, this is reduced and we've increased that I feel much happier and I'm well prepared now. And fourthly, can they, were they happy about uh, using interaction? Again, the similar result, we've actually uh, increased their uh, ability or confidence in introducing interaction in the, within the, the session. We'd also asked um, how likely students were to kind of pursue a career in medical education, kind of pre and post the course. And again, we found that those numbers um, increased. And there was actually a few students who, not when speaking to them, hadn't considered careers in medical education at all, who were now thinking about it. Um, and as well as kind of the Likert scale, we also got some free text comments. I promise we haven't altered these in any way. These are real comments that the, that the candidates gave us. So you can see we actually had some very good feedback from the course. Um, so kind of very enjoyable sessions, um, and said that realised teaching and learning could be fun. I'll let you guys read that, but we got some really good free text comments as well um, as part of the course. So, in conclusion, we feel that the tips course or the tips the teaching course to be a good foundation with which the junior doctors can then develop further their teaching skills. The course received excellent feedback that you've just seen. There was an increase in confidence of uh, teaching in a range of settings. There was increased encouragement in building interactivity and dealing with students in difficulty. Mm -hmm. And actually as a result of this as well, we actually had five of our candidates contacting us to arrange teaching sessions through us so they want to actually get more experience in teaching and do more teaching. And one of those candidates has actually applied for a post in Med Ed, and I have been told has actually gotten that post since, since the course. Not in our trust, unfortunately. But <laughs>